This data includes 100 randomly listed individuals from two groups, group A and group B. For each individual, we have measured nine properties of that individual listed as the variables V1 to V9. We wish to use a principal component analysis to see if we can combine these variables to derive new components which will produce a simpler description of the system. So we go to STAT, Multivariate Data, Principal Components, we select all the variables and under Graphs we select to see the scree plot and the score plot for the first two components and under Storage we will store the coefficients of the first four principal components. So we go to Storage and we will store these coefficients in four new columns which will be C12, C13, C14 and C15. Okay and we now run the analysis. We can look first at the scree plot which shows the contributions from each of our new principal components. And this is quantified by the variable eigenvalue. And quite simply, the most significant contribution comes from the first component, a significant contribution from the second component, and further components give very little additional information to the system. So we're concerned mainly with the first two principal components. And if we then look at the score plot, which is based on these first two components where we see each subject in our data has been plotted on the basis of its first and second component values. We can see the value of this plot if we right click on one of the symbols we can then edit the symbols and we will choose groups and we will identify the categorical variable we want to relate to these groups. So we, we will use the grouping variable for A or B. Click OK. And now we can see that each data point has been identified according to the original group in the data that it came from, either group A or group B. And we can see now that the majority of group A are on the right hand side of this plot and the majority of group B on the left hand side of the plot. So actually the first component of our data has been fairly effective in separating group A data from group B data. And we can see that only a few data values have been misclassified. So there's only a few of group A that are on the left hand side of the zero line and there's only a few of group B that are on the right hand side of the line. We can now look at the coefficients of the principal components that have been produced. So we will look at the data in the worksheet and we can see that columns C12, C13, C14, C15 now contain the relevant coefficients. I can now give titles to these principal coefficients. So I call the first one principal component 1, PC2, PC3, PC4. And for clarification, I will add a column here where I will identify the relevant variables V1, V2, V3, etc. So that now we can understand this table of coefficients in that principal component 1 is then a linear combination of these variables V1 to V9 with these relevant coefficients. So PC1 is equal to 0.046 times V1 plus 0.465 times V2 
plus 0.24 times V3, etc. Clearly some of these coefficients are much more significant, so that for the first principal component PC1, it is mainly a combination of V2, V5, V6 and V9, which agrees with the grouping that we saw in cluster analysis. Similarly, principal component 2 is a combination of other variables, principally V3, V4 and V7, again agreeing with our cluster analysis calculations. We can choose to store the calculated value of PC1, for example, for each particular observation in a new column. So for example in C17 we can say we will store the value for the principal component 1 and we will calculate that value by using calculator. We will store the results in the new column given the name VPC1 and for this calculation we will take the coefficient of V1 so we'll take the coefficient PC1, but we want that to be in row 1 of our data, so it is 0.046556, and we will multiply that by the value of V1, which will be there. We will then add the coefficient of V2 for PC1, which is in the second row of the PC1 column and that will be multiplied by V2 and similarly we do this for all the other coefficients so the next coefficient of V3 is in row 3 multiplied by V3 and we continue until we have each of these coefficients multiplying the relevant variable and we can then just click OK. It then calculates the value of the first principal component, VPC1, for each subject within our data set.